2019 as a whole has been a fantastic year to be an anime fan. Each season has delivered the hits that we expected, with plenty of surprises we weren't anticipating, which thankfully the fall season was no exception. The best way to describe this past season, at least for myself, would be imagine all the series that you expect to be great ending up just that. But then there was an equal number of questionable to doubtful shows that you thought to yourself probably would be decent at best, but then ended up becoming so solid if not better than the, well, duh, they're gonna be great anime. It was a season that flew by and certain shows had me clawing my eyes out realizing I had to wait for the next episode. So yeah, you can say I love the fall season. Bookworm was a series that at first I hummed and hawed about, not really sure if this was for me. I watched a couple of episodes and I found it charming, don't get me wrong, but I didn't see that hook that was going to keep me going. But I gave it one more shot and I'm actually really glad I did. I found for myself, two to three episodes at a time was the optimal way to experience this series, with a few day break every so often. The anime is about a girl who adores reading books, but ends up in a world where literature is a rare commodity. So you have to be rolling in money to read a good book, and unfortunately for her, the family she ends up reincarnating to is poor as hell. You can kind of see where the story would go from here. A kid who read everything there is to read in the original world to now craving books in a dry well of a library. It's something that I enjoyed from the start, but it just didn't have that hook to keep me going, or so I thought. But the more episodes that I consumed, the more I found myself appreciating this world and its set of characters, which in return made my experience amusing and not feeling like a chore like I thought it would end up being. With the way that the lead character Seiya is designed, you'd have actually expected that this character and the series in general would have been written by the Konosuba author, but it wasn't. Yet it still competed in terms of laughs with that hilarious series, at least for myself. I adored Cautious Hero. Take the most overpowered character magical. Make him overly cautious to the point that he disregards the lives of others in favor of preparation despite being 20 or so levels above his opponent. This results in him leaving villages to burn as he works out more before his next battle. That's this anime with a constant evolution of the cautious persona being incorporated into more situations surrounding more and more characters. All the tropes that you would expect in an isekai like this are actually placed on the main goddess who acts like the viewer watching with some of her dialogue mirroring what we're all thinking. What the hell is wrong with this guy and I sort of love and hate him all at the same time. Where Seiya shuts down all tropes and gimmicks himself, as all he cares about is being perfectly prepared. I truly thought by episode 3 the jokes would grow stale, yet they found numerous ways to make the cautious situations new and refreshing. The growth of the cast definitely aided to this fact, as the more people to bounce this man off of, the better. Many might want to critique the presentation, as its art isn't the sharpest around, but like with Konosuba, the rougher around the edges design allows for the absurdity to transition quite naturally, meaning it would always get a response out of me when I saw something like this. Dr. Stone quickly rose up my list of the best anime of 2019, and with the conclusion of its first season, I can safely say it is, without a doubt, top 10 of this year, at least for myself. When you have your lead character who is a mad scientist who can balance between lovable character helping those who have never seen the joys of the modern world, and then transition to mad lunatic who recognizes now that they are happy, they will perform better, is pretty fantastic. The revival of the modern age from a Stone Age setting is incredible, and watching the second core unfold with the established set of characters let everything flow a lot more naturally than in its first core, which was already pretty damn awesome. We understand these people on a personal level, so the second half had more room to flex its writing capabilities on areas surrounding its world and technological progressions, as now all the time given to the characters wasn't introduction but rather the next step in their evolution. Their intros were great, but where they would go after is where where the true Dr. Stone begins. This is a AAA production that hits all the right notes, blending humor, emotion, and educational, all wrapped up into one of the most anime design packages I've seen, yet will hook the casual to anime hater easier than you'd imagine, while also pleasing those hardcore enthusiasts on the process. I went into this anime optimistic, but I was totally ready to be disappointed, I'll be brutally honest. I feel as if when anime tries to tackle mature themes that really hit home with the real world, very, very few get it right. Thankfully, Beastars does and does it with grace. This is a character piece where many social themes are explored, the hardships of life and what it means to be different, using herbivores and carnivores as a way to explore real human hardships but painted in such a way to avoid those people who try to act like everyone is human, so why is this an issue? 
Depicting them as different types of animals clearly exposes the many flaws of humanity in compelling ways. The 3D is some of the best TV anime has experienced as of late, which is no real surprise looking at the team behind this, which gives these characters more life and movement than your average 2D production would nail. Many had their doubts on if this should be a 3D anime as look at the manga's art quality, but it's for that very reason that it needed to be 3D in order to do this series justice. It is without a doubt one of Fall's best anime that everyone needs to check it out whenever they get a chance, be it legal streaming or time related reasons, just do it as it's simply exceptional. Now sometimes I'll watch an anime that I don't really even know what to say, and this series from the Konosuba author is the perfect example of this feeling. I think I like it, not because I think it's bad or good, but rather it's so weird and absurd that it made me keep watching, for the reason of not knowing what the hell I'd see next, and that was very amusing. This wrestling, animal-loving protagonist gets wrapped up into situations that either made me laugh out loud or just question what the hell I was seeing, but I couldn't move my eyes away from the screen as this absurdity was kind of amazing. This will be very easy to tell if it's going to be for you, probably just based on the trailer, I'll be honest, but five minutes into an episode, it will definitely get the message across. I wanted to see more, and I had a unique and, I think, fun time watching this absurdity of the author's mind transformed into another anime that I'm left not even knowing what I felt, but but I think I enjoyed it while questioning the anime medium all in the process. There's an era of anime where you had your Triguns, your Bebops, Helsing Ultimates, where it had this like gritty feeling to it. Sometimes those anime were wacky, other times badass with the odd moment on pulling with your heartstrings. This is Madhouse going back to their roots and delivering an anime that feels like nothing 2019 has seen. Your main character is a modified human with a revolver on his head. He cracks cheesy 90s one-liners every sentence, who gets into badass robotic looking fights, who is pushing back against a corrupted society, tackling interesting political Political themes, while making me laugh and cheer all in the process. It's a show that obviously won't be for everyone. The main character is a revolver head who talks about cigarettes and drops one-liners every few minutes, while badass things happen in the background that easily could be viewed as stupid to some. But I love it. It's fun, it made me laugh more times than I care to admit, which might have been because I'm a child, but so be it. But the longer the anime went on, the more I loved its world and story that it was trying to tell. As if the more technology progresses, the more underhanded tactics we don't see in broad daylight start popping up in the background that say damn human compassion, it's all for the progression of so-called mankind. It's an old school anime in a modern production aesthetic that I highly recommend to anyone looking for something breaking away from the typical anime trends that we're used to seeing nowadays. This was easily the most shocking anime of the season, at least for myself, just because so many, myself included, didn't think that the third season would excel after the disappointment of its second season. Had the second season of Psychopaths just be the first season of a new anime, it wouldn't have received the amount of flack that it got, as it was a slightly below average story due to its poor execution of an ending. Under the Psychopaths banner, it's a big disappointment for many. With eight episodes all running double length, we get what the second season always needed, room to grow. These cases link up in an elegant way that excite you, let you breathe and decompress with new and old characters alike, really let the series get back to its roots and feel like it's some of sci-fi anime's best. The two new leads, Kay and Arata, are amazing, their banter is genuine and you feel the chemistry always bouncing off of one another. The politics and civil conspiracies are mirroring what I adored about season 1 with a production that feels cinematic more often than not, and a lot of those season 2 characters people ripped into actually feel genuine in this season and are actually worth having on screen. The main issue Season 2 had was a lack of runtime for the plot it was aiming to tell, but having the equivalent of 16 episodes over 8 weeks lets this story have the time to slow things down for 10 minutes without ruining the pacing or disregarding plot-centric areas for slice-of-life banter. It just feels so amazing to love Psychopaths again like I did with Season 1. The biggest thing I took away with Season 4 of My Hero Academia is that the longer I see these characters, the more I recognize everyone will get their chance to shine. Typically with a large cast such as this, a third, if you're lucky, will get fleshed out. But now that we're four seasons in, it's pretty clear that everyone will get at least an arc to flex what it is they have to offer, which is a really good breath of fresh air for the battle shonen genre. Though as great as that is, the villain arc is the best aspect for this season. Typically, vileness doesn't come across that well in superhero stories, but where this overhaul arc goes in its first core makes your blood boil. He is disgusting, but exactly what a character like Deku needs to shatter his world and make his transition to being a hero for all quite challenging. We all know it's great at this point, we're four seasons in after all, but it's nice to say it still keeps improving over time and I can't wait to see where this madness continues to unfold with its second core.
The final stretch of Fire Force's first season really was quite outstanding. The series had plenty of tropey gimmicks many older battle series were plagued with in its first half, but the second core really transitioned into a more compelling character piece where the stakes rose episode by episode. There was genuine emotion mirroring the intro episodes as we watched families ripped apart by spontaneous combustion, but now tied into a cultist conspiracy. All the characters minus a couple became intriguing in some capacity, and the humor kept raising the bar for at least for my sense of humor. If you you somewhat enjoyed the first core and either you haven't finished it or maybe you put off the second core. I really recommend watching it because for those that enjoyed the first half in some way such as myself, the payoff in this season really makes those early mistakes feel quite small in comparison to the great content we receive later on. I enjoyed the first core of Farrygon, with the rest of the 12 people in the Farrygon fandom, so I obviously was excited to see the conclusion to this story. I was actually really shocked by how much the second half of this tale improved from characters to action to world building in general. The first third of the second core actually has more depth than the entirety of season 1, and this is coming from someone who enjoyed the first half, so that's saying something. I think this series has a lot of merit. It's an intriguing idea with a fascinating twist on a military story. I really recommend more give this a shot. Don't look at the internet on what you should feel, just try binging this series. I truly think if more just give this an honest shot with an open mind, you'll see the world, its characters, and even its CGI, they actually have merit. As when you see floating monsters, it kind of makes sense to have them not meshing with their users, or at least that's how I've always felt on the matter. Just give it a shot. It's hard to compare this anime to any that I've watched as of late, but it sort of feels like one of those shows that four years ago I'd have watched among 20 anime of a season that was really good but just got overshadowed because of so many big hits just being in the same season. This series is cute, it's funny, and it has some unexpected twists that really entertain me without much struggle. The whole idea of a series of unfortunate events not being all that bad if you close one of your eyes and view things from half of your perspective is pretty fantastic. A dude gets sold to demons by his parents, but the old dude just wanted a grandson. Despite demons hating humans, he makes his way through life like a boss while hiding his true identity. It's so anime and fantastic that you typically don't see an idea like this get a high level 2 core production, so I really recommend more check this gem out as it is a blast to binge. I played up to the fourth story arc in the Grand Order mobile game before my data got corrupted and I was freed from gacha hell that sucked all my time away, so never got to this story focusing on our boy Gilgamesh who is a bitching king. Despite this being the first true series in the Grand Order anime realm, they didn't make it all that difficult to follow as they properly hinted at past events, what troubles our characters while letting this Babylonian tale stand tall as its own story. The characters across the board are fantastic and though I'm not going to show it as I want people to be shocked when they see it. There are fights that mirror what Ufotable has done with this property. When the animators are given time to flesh out their works, it shows in the quality as seen with this production. It may just be another fate anime to some, but for me, it's up there with some of their best anime that they've had, and I look forward to its conclusion next season. If you were to take Kekai Sensen and Cockcraft and let them get a little freaky, the baby would probably end up being this, and that's pretty rad. It doesn't seem to be receiving that much attention, so as always, let me be the one to shed some light on those underrated anime of the season. Right off the bat, the castle characters are fun, with this mixture of supernatural combined with the real world, but not as hostile as something like Cockcraft. It's a wacky, badass, and interesting police-style story that I found to be a pretty excellent binge. It doesn't feel like just some rip-off of past anime, but I guess it might have been over shadowed by the juggernauts of a season, and the few who did keep up with it just weren't as enthusiastic like myself. There's plenty of great anime this season, so prioritize to whatever fits your needs, but maybe try this one out if you get the time, as I found it to be a welcoming surprise episode 1 all the way to the home stretch. It's easily one of the best anime this year, and it was just the prologue. Goddamn. These characters are multi-layered, they are vile, they are bastard, the author tosses good and evil out the window in favor of what humanity is complex. All throughout history, victors wrote the tales that would be passed down throughout the ages. Kings and conquerors who succeeded won't be portrayed as unjust as they actually were more often than not. With Vinland Saga, we get to see many points of views without a filter, meaning we see all the flaws without the censorship that is history. It's amazing, it's been amazing, and I shouldn't need to say any more. It's studio wit at their best, and I look forward to see where this story will go from here. Blade the Immortal is one of those anime that I knew pretty early on that not a lot were going to be hyping it up. Up as much as myself. But yes, when you adapt 30 some odd volumes into a 24 episode anime, usually it's not going to turn out all that well for manga readers and anime originals alike. But 
for myself with no experience with this source material, I found myself really enjoying its set of characters, the revenge story that it was trying to tell, and everything about it just really, really clicked for me. Yes, maybe the pacing could be considered iffy or just it's a jumbled mess if you look at it as a page-for-page -page adaptation of its source material, but as a standalone story, I felt like I understood these characters, their personal motivation, what drove them, and why they committed these atrocities. I love the old-school feel that it has, and it's something that kept my interest week by week, and at multiple points, it made me think of this series in an even higher light. Will this be for everyone? Probably not, as seen by the lack of hype. I don't think it will please a majority of manga fans, but if you haven't read the manga like myself and just want to go into an interesting old school feeling vibe with a lot of maturity and a lot of blood and gore, definitely give this one a shot. It's been a damn fun ride and I look forward to its conclusion with its second core. If you've seen a Gretzko on Netflix, this is like that, but with a slightly different approach. Now, it may look simple, but that simplistic beauty ended up being one of the funniest shows this season, I kid you not. This cracked me up with episode 1, but when I binged the rest, I had tears at certain points. You have friends who will just rip off someone's tail to get out of uncomfortable social situations because they know it will grow back. It's goddamn funny. Babylon is a series that if you were to take someone who understands the fundamentals of politics and how political campaigns are run, but combine that with an interesting thriller storyline surrounding a group of characters trying to legalize suicide and having actually really solid points on why they should legalize it, but also a mass murder can lead people to their deaths legally, you get one of the best stories I've seen all year. The way this anime directs this tale gets you unnerved at every possible moment. The cat and mouse chase of trying to stop a politician from legalizing suicide as clearly he is working with this girl who can somehow change her appearance with simple words getting someone to kill themselves is exhilarating. You never know where the story wants to go. You think you do and then episode 3 concludes and you're less speechless. You then get a grasp on the story with its second part and then by the end of episode 7 you pull the dark corners of my mind and turn that into a slaughterhouse style story. This series lives up to its thriller tag. It's one of the best I've seen for the genre. I've been hyping this up since the first three episodes dropped back to back and the longer I watch this the more I crave this adrenaline rush. Watch it. It's my favorite new series this season without a doubt in my mind. Fall was simply a blast. I ended up watching a few more anime than I usually do and that's mainly thanks to many of these series being great for a binge watch. There's a good balance of comedy, action, and plot heavy series that brings a variety watcher such as myself a big grin as I feel quite satisfied with anime in 2019 as a whole. Whether you're in it for the thrills like Babylon, laughs with Cautious Hero, or simple but worthwhile series like Demon School, you should find a series or two that will hit your needs. But as always, let me know what you thought on this past season down in that comment section below. I obviously didn't watch everything, so whether you watched something that I didn't or you want to share your thoughts on something I did discuss in this video, let me know whatever you're feeling. If you did enjoy my ramblings, be sure to leave a like to show your support, and remember to hit that subscribe button if you have to be new around here. Lastly, there's always my Patreon for those who want to go the extra mile and receive some fun little perks all in the process, but of course that is if you so wish. So until next time everyone, please take care, and have a good one.